Hey everyone, Joe Grant here to demonstrate the new pin mapper command of the JTagulator. The pin mapper command lets you associate physical pins of a target chip with their positions within the JTAG boundary scan register. This is a special register that sits in between the JTAG tap, the test access port, and the IO pins and lets you actually set the state of pins and read the state of pins through this register. This boundary scan feature can be really useful for reverse engineering, forensic analysis, and advanced hardware hacking because we basically become the puppet master and we can shift bits out through the boundary scan and control what else is out there. External test or X test is the JTAG instruction that lets us shift bits into the register and then latch those to physical pins. Depending on the design of the target chip, each boundary scan cell might have an associated control cell. This control cell will require either an active high or an active low to set that particular boundary scan pin as an output or an input. We don't actually know what that is until we try our scan, but we need to set the pins as outputs in order for our scan to work. So the JTagulator gives you an option to fill the boundary scan initially with logic level high or fill the boundary scan initially with logic level low. And then we shift the opposite polarity bit one at a time through the cells to see how that affects the pins. If one of the JTagulator probe channels detects that change in state on one of the output pins, then we know that we've actually found the right bit for that particular pin. Then the JTagulator is going to do a series of bit tests on that particular output pin by shifting different bits through the boundary scan cell just to help reduce false positives. To make things a little bit trickier, in versions of the JTAG 1149.1 specification, prior to 2001, the X-Test instruction was required to be all zeros. Dealing with those chips is easy because we can just send an instruction of zeros and know that we're gonna end up in the X-Test mode. That requirement has since been deprecated, which means chip vendors can choose whatever non-zero instruction they want to actually be the X-Test command. In that case, we need to figure out what that instruction is before we even start our scan. To verify that you're actually in the X-Test mode and properly controlling the pins of the target device, you can use an oscilloscope, or if your target board has external LEDs, you might see those turning on and off as we're shifting bits through the boundary scan and controlling those external pins. All right, let's actually go run the command. Here's my hardware setup. This is the JTagulator connected over USB to my computer and I have a terminal program running on there. And then we have the Lattice Mach XO development board, which is pretty handy because it breaks out every individual pin of the chip. And there's some LEDs on here as well, which are gonna be uh, nice for us when we're trying to figure out what our X test scan actually is. So I just have the JTagulator connected to the development board just arbitrarily with, you know, wires in whatever order. It doesn't really matter. The one that does matter is our ground connection. So that's going to the ground pin of this connector that I worked out earlier. Uh, the other pins, it doesn't matter because the JTagulator is going to identify the correct pin out for us to use to communicate over JTag to do our X test scan and all the other JTag communication that we want to do. The pin mapper command supports any of the unused channels as probes. So you can have multiple probes set up on multiple channels. And instead of just having, you know, little flying leads like this, you could solder a bunch of wires down if you wanted to do that, if you have something more complicated. Any of these pins, it's gonna look for the correct signals that it's shifting out over the boundary scan register to all of the external physical uh, connections on the chip. Right now, this uh, Mach XO is just running a little sample code. We can see it's just counting on the LEDs. And as soon as we take over those pins using the boundary scan X test mode, we're gonna be controlling these LEDs, which is kind of cool. So we'll see that behavior change. So we do need to set our target voltage before anything else. That's gonna be 3.3 volts. And now we'll go over to the JTAG sub menu. And this is where our new uh, pin mapper X test scan command is. But we're not quite ready to do that yet because the pin mapper expects us to know uh, the actual JTAG pinout, and we don't know that yet. So we have to identify the JTAG pinout first and then even figure out what the uh, X test instruction is for this particular hardware uh, before we can actually do the test. So we have a couple commands to do. First, let's do our identify JTAG pinout, J command. Um, starting channel is, I don't know, just do one to seven. I'm not gonna bring channels low. So I'm gonna press spacebar, and this should, like any normal JTagulator functionality, just uh, enumerate through all the possible pin permutations until it finds the one that is the correct JTAG interface. Okay, so now we have our uh, JTAG pinout. Um, we can also just test that. I always like doing that, doing a test bypass, takes in all of the pins, 
and uh, shift some data through just to make sure we're actually shifting data in and, and receiving data out properly. So we know that's good. We can get device ID as well, a more formal, more ex expanded version of what we saw in the JTAG scan. So we're good to go. Now what we need to do actually is the Y command, the discovery command, and that's going to determine what the instruction register length is given our known JTAG pinout. So it says the instruction register length is eight. Different chips have different instruction register lengths. So the minimum is two. Uh, I don't know if there's a maximum. And in this case, our instruction register length is eight, which means there's 256 possible instructions that we can send to the chip. Each of those instructions is gonna have a different data register associated with a different size. Uh, a lot of them, if they're unused instructions, will have a single bit data register. Uh, a single bit data register is also used for the bypass mode. So I've selected to just ignore those because we're looking for the boundary scan register, which is gonna be one of the larger ones. So we press spacebar, and it's just enumerating through different instructions. We see uh, instruction 01 is 295. That's promising. We see 192, we see 32. A lot of these instructions are gonna be for uh, JTAG debugging, programming support, maybe some undocumented features that we as the user uh, don't know about. Okay, so the uh, discovery is complete. In this case, it actually turns out through some trial and error that the X test scan is instruction D5, which has a 160 bit boundary scan register. If I didn't know already that it was D5, if I hadn't have done this in advance, I'd have to go through and just test each instruction and see if that turns on the X test mode for this particular device. So let's go and do our pin mapper command. So we're gonna press P, we're gonna to have to enter the known JTAG pinout, and it determines again, instruction register length is eight, that's good. So enter X test instruction. For us, it's gonna be D5 and hex. It's gonna verify, okay, boundary scan register length is 160. Fill boundary scan register with high or low. So we say low, pause after successful detection. This is if you're probing, uh, looking for a specific pin, you might want it to, to pause so you can write that down, acknowledge it and keep going. Okay, so we're gonna press spacebar. And now we're starting and shifting bits through the boundary scan. When we see a pipe, that vertical line on our terminal program, that's when it's reached the end of the boundary scan and it's starting the loop over again. So now that the command is running, we can actually look at the JTAGulator and we can see the status indicator is blinking. And then if we look on our target board, we see the LEDs. And then every once in a while, the LED one at a time is turning off. These LEDs on this particular design are active low because we shifted a bunch of zeros through the boundary scan register and they're all on. And then when we shift our logic level one through, that's the one that ends up being turned off as we scan through there. And now we can just use our probe and start probing around to measure the physical connections and how they correspond to the boundary scan register inside of the chip. So if I go ahead and hold my probe, let's do it just on one of the LED pins. So I'm just holding it there. And then if we look up on our screen, we can actually see now it's scanning through and then every time it comes around to register bit 86 and 87, that's the channel six probe that I'm holding onto my board. Now we see channel six detecting two different register bits. That's because of this control cell that's associated with that individual boundary scan pin. So we don't actually know which uh, pin is it 86 or 87 that turns it on and off. And then is it 86 or 87 that is actually the boundary cell. So we would just do trial and error at that point. So now I can move down to another LED and we'll see that the data actually changes. So now we're looking at pin 88 and 89. So I can go down again. Now we see 90 and 91. I can even move over to some of the other ones. Let's just pick a random connection here. So now we see register bit 148 and 149. So we can start mapping out little by little the physical connections of this chip and how they associate to the boundary scan register. The pin mapper command can help us determine many of the external pins on a target device, but not necessarily all of them. It should work for bi-directional IO pins and output pins. It might not work with every target though, since we can't predict how every system is designed. So things like input pins, pins that are tied to fixed voltage levels, 
uh, or pins that have some internal non-standard configuration will probably fail. Other devices require a specific pin to be pulled high or low on power up, which is sometimes known as a bootstrap pin, in order to enable the boundary scan or even enable JTAG. Also, some devices actually remove the boundary scan capability and call themselves JTAG compatible. That means that even if we discover the JTAG interface, we might not actually have access to the boundary scan register to do our pin mapper X test scan. As you've probably figured out by now, getting this command working can be a little bit tricky and uh, the success is gonna vary depending on your target, but it is one of these commands that's just an extra tool in your toolbox in case you need to use it. Once again, I'm Joe Grand signing off. Thanks for watching.